Hi everyone, I'm Miss Katie from Rockland Public Library and happy Women's History Month. Today we're going to be reading about another real life person, Jane Goodall, in the story, Me, Jane. This story is by Patrick McDonald and we're gonna learn a little bit about Jane's young life and then we'll learn a little bit more in the back passages here. Me, Jane, and here is real life Jane Goodall with her stuffed monkey. Jane had a stuffed toy chimpanzee named Jubilee. She cherished Jubilee and took him everywhere she went. And Jane loved to be outside. There they go. She watched birds making their nests, spiders spinning their webs, and squirrels chasing one another up and down and up and down the trees. Jane learned all that she could about the animals and plants she studied in her backyard and read about in books. Do you ever do that? You see an animal outside and you have a question. Why? Why do they do what they're doing? Oh, and look, here are some of her studies. She's looking into alligators and elephants and giraffes and birds. One day, Curious Jane wondered where eggs came from. So she and Jubilee snuck inside Grandma Nut's chicken coop. They go. They hid behind some straw and stayed very still. You see who's coming? Wah, 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 wah. And they observed the miracle. There's the chicken and the brand new laid egg. It was a magical world fill, filled with joy and wonder. And Jane felt very much a part of it. Jane often climbed her favorite tree, which she named Beach. And she would lay her cheek against its trunk and seemed to feel the sap flowing beneath the bark. Jane could feel her own heart beating, beating, beating. Can anyone else do that? A lot of times we check our wrists to feel our heart beating, but if you've been running around, you might be able to feel your heart beating and you might even be able to lay your chest against one of your family members and feel their beating of their heart against their chest. With the wind in her hair, she read and reread the books about Tarzan of the Apes, in which another girl, also named Jane, lived in the jungles of Africa. She dreamed of life in Africa too. We see how this picture changes. This is her real house. Oops, this is her house. She's up in a tree, but she imagines living in Africa. It's changed, the sun has gotten hotter. There are other animals too. Elephant, giraffe, and a tiger. She dreamed of a life living with and helping all animals. At night, Jane would tuck Jubilee into bed, say her prayers, and fall asleep. to awake one day. Look, she's all grown up. And where is she? To awake one day to her dream come true. And here is the real Jane Goodall working in Africa, learning all about the animals she was so curious about. The end. Great listening, everyone. We're gonna learn a little bit more about Jane Goodall in the back part. When Jane Goodall was 10 years old, she decided that when she grew up, she would go to Africa, live with the animals and write about them. Almost everyone told her her goal was impossible. Her family had little money and she was a girl in a time when girls were not encouraged to pursue adventurous careers. 
but her mother encouraged her to follow her dreams. When Jane finished school, she continued to learn about Africa and worked hard to save enough money to go there. She finally arrived in Africa in 1957, met famed anthropologist Louise Leakey, and began studying chimpanzees at the Gombe Stream Game Reserve, known also as the Gombe Stream National Park, in Tanzania in 1960. One of Jane's most important observations was her discovery that chimpanzees were able to make and use tools. They could make their own tools. Until this time, expert thought, experts thought only humans were able to do so. So she discovered something completely new by studying these chimpanzees in, in real life, being able to see them in person. But based on Jane's remarkable studies, the world was forced to rethink what makes humans different from animals. She wrote about these discoveries and countless other observations in her book in 1986, The Chimpanzees of Gombe, Patterns of Behavior. Today, Jane travels, and today she's 88 years old. Today, she travels around the world, raising awareness about the plight of chimpanzees and environmental conservation. Human populations are growing and the forests of Africa where chimpanzees live are being cut down and chimps and other animals are being hunted for food. She set up the Jane Goodall Institute, an organization that helps communities near wild places grow more food, have clean water, and send children to school, while also teaching people how to protect, how to protect the nearby wildlife. Jane Goodall's Roots and Shoots program, Roots and Shoots, Roots and Shoots program has been set up to educate young people everywhere about the world's environmental and social problems and empower them to take action. This growing organization operates in more than 120 countries. Oh, oh my gosh. And there are 10,000 members ranging in age from preschoolers to university students. And you can learn more about the Roots and Shoots at rootsandshoots.org or janegoodall.org. And then we have a special message just from Jane Goodall. She writes to us, each of us make a difference. We cannot live through a single day without making an impact on the world around us. And we have a choice as to what sort of a difference we make. The life of each one of us matters in the scheme of things and I encourage everyone, especially young people, to make the world a better place for people, animals, and the environment. Children are motivated when, we, when they can see the positive results their hands have, of, their hard work has. <laughs> As I travel, I meet hundreds of Roots and Shoots groups. They're always eager to tell Dr. Jane what they've been doing and how they are making a difference in their communities. Whether they're doing something simple like recycling or collecting trash, or something that requires a great deal of effort like restoring a wetland or raising money for street children and local dog shelter. They are a continual source of inspiration for me and for other children around the world. I invite you to get involved. From Jane Goodall. So that is the story of Jane Goodall, and Jane Goodall encourages all of us to get involved. Can you think of a way you might be able to help your community? There's a great suggestion in there, which is just to help pick up trash outside. Maybe you could go to a park, or maybe just on your own street, and help put on gloves and pick up some trash. Clean up the environment. We also read a book uh, last week, or earlier this week, um, a fiction story, a make-believe story, about Amara and the bats. So this was another book we read about, and this book has lots of other ideas about how to protect and help our wildlife. Building bat houses and ways to attract wildlife to an area like a park or our own backyards. So I highly recommend going out and seeing if you can make a difference just like wonderful Jane Goodall. I hope you all have a wonderful week and I can't wait to read to you all soon. Keep learning and keep asking why. Bye-bye. <laughs>